Everywhere we go, everything we do, we depend on cables and power supplies and having all the knowledge of the world at our fingertips. How in days of old were cathedrals built without computers? How was the Battle of Hastings won without Wi-Fi? Sure, I need all this equipment so I can film these videos for you, but I'll tell you something. You don't need power supplies to make electrifying music. Just over the hedge there, you can see the river that I passed on my way and horses grazing in the field. It's quarter past eight in the morning here at Stratford Tony on a very damp autumn day in England. And I'm looking at the most majestic facade of this church in all its ancient glory and the sun is just peeping out from the gloom. Right now people are sat in traffic on their way to work and I am in absolute bliss here in this churchyard. The grass is still long here. This church is steeped in so much history. You can tell just from walking around the outside. It's made particularly moving and particularly haunting by this isolated hilltop location. The church is no longer used for worship. It's under the care of the church's conservation trust. Although no longer used for regular worship, our churches remain consecrated and open to all. And the atmosphere changes the moment I step inside. I can already tell that this church is nothing like anywhere I've visited previously. It's bare, it's free of soft furnishings, it's free of clutter. It's literally like entering a time warp in here. And I wonder if you've ever seen these before, box pews. On many churches, of course, these have been removed. But here, beautifully kept. Imagine all the families, the wealthier families, I suppose, who sat here and observed the service. And from here, the steps leading up to this pulpit. Silent and peaceful now. But think of all the fire and rhetoric that's come from here over the years.
Although a small village with a population of about 100 until the 19th century, Stratford Tony must have had a very long history. It was here that the Roman road, Strat meaning street, from Salisbury to Blandford crossed the river Ebble by a ford. The first half of the village's name recalls this. Tony derives from Ralph de Tony, William the Conqueror's standard bearer at the Battle of Hastings in 1066, to whom the manor of Stratford was given. The tower arch and porch date from about 1500. The tower is typical Wiltshire work with square blocks of stone alternating with panels of flint. Gargoyles dispose of the rainwater from the roof. There is a wealth of information about the history and the artefacts inside. So I'm using this handy church tour. The font is one of the oldest things in the church, dating from the 13th century. Turn to your right and go through the doors to the bottom of the tower. Well, I shall. I'll try. In 1753, a young man sat in the window and etched his name onto the stone. Well, I'll see if I can find it. No. Oh, there. What elegant handwriting Mr. Noyes had. This feature inside the wall is said to be a leper's squint, which means a hole where those with leprosy could watch the service from outside, just like social distancing, I guess. It's now been covered up and only occupied by a spider. It says here, now you've looked round inside, please turn around, go outside and look at the graveyard. The reason why the ground is so high is because there are over 50,000 people buried here. Very few have any stones marking their graves. Most people weren't buried in a coffin, but wrapped up in a cloth called a shroud and then put straight into the ground. There are a number of memorials to the Parrot family, who lived in Stratford Tony for a long time. There are memorials to two brothers, one who died in World War I, and the other in the Second World War, both next to each other. It seems unthinkable that this serene space was once filled with the clamour and noise of parishioners taking their seats making conversation before the service. The only echoes of the past that I get from this building at the moment is the sound of birds outside and my own footsteps. But of course, there's a musical instrument in here powered by no electricity at all. And that's what I've come here to see. American viewers, this is, of course, what you would call a pump organ or a reed organ. I use my feet to provide air, and when I play keys, that air is let into the reeds to produce the sound. Looking to the right-hand side of this organ, amongst these cobwebs, there's a handle here and an equivalent one on the other side. If you were strong enough, you could move this organ with some ease. The other aspect of pump organs which makes them extremely practical is that you don't need to tune them. An organ would normally have to be tuned every few months. The pipes would go sharp or flat. Here, you don't have that issue. The temperature fluctuates, but this, in theory, stays, broadly speaking, in tune. It's like a large version of a harmonica. Air is blown through the reeds to produce the sound. I'm an organist, I use my feet to play notes. The idea of supplying wind with my feet and playing only with my hands is somehow counterintuitive. I don't know how I'm gonna get on with this. Especially in wellies. <laughs> this is the bit where it doesn't work at all. Oh, it does work. <laughs> Good. It would have been a short video if it didn't. So 
so I've used up all the air. I have to keep pumping. Playing one of these pump organs is completely different to playing a pipe organ. It requires different technique. You have two keyboards on a pipe organ and they sound independently. To get that effect on one of these, the keyboard is split down the middle. So you can get two different kinds of sounds with each hand. So if I provide some wind and play the viola, we've got a really lovely sweet sound at an eight foot pitch. So a piano pitch, effectively. Notice how when I go below middle C, the sound stops. That's because the upper stops only affect this half of the keyboard. A viola, and then an octave higher, a piccolo. I feel a bit like Glenn Gould sat hunched over this instrument. Left hand side, there's a diapason, the classic organ stop. Very plain, very chunky, very reliable. This left hand side of the keyboard also has the bass stops. The sub bass. Because of these bass stops, you get an extremely mushy sound if you play a chord down low. And notice how expressive I can be by controlling the wind with my feet. It's apparent just how this instrument creaks and it groans in its old age. Somehow uh, in my brain, I instinctively think of the sound of a baby crying or an elderly person speaking or stammering. It has that quality to it. Isn't it just so moving and human-like, the way that this instrument is powered by wind and the way it stammers and stutters and groans? It's just one of the things that makes these pump organs so expressive. And I talk about reminding me of a human voice here, but I haven't showed you the most human-like stop of all on this organ. It's actually called the human voice stop. It's the Vox Humana. Right in the middle there, Vox Humana. When I draw the stop, it allows a flap to spin inside the organ.
which is powered, of course, by my feet pumping on the pedals, air is blown onto that flap to make it spin. And the spinning creates a vibrato, an undulation in the sound, just like a human speaking or singing voice. There we go. There we go. You know, I often think that things are made beautiful by their imperfections. Just look at the surroundings of this church. The undulating ground level, the uncut grass, the wonky gravestones. It's all perfect in its imperfection. And the fact that some things don't work here, some of these stops, they actually cipher. You can't play them at all. Listen to this. We just get a whistle, and we can't stop it unless we remove the stops. The cobwebs and the dust, they all add to the charm. If somebody came in this building with a hoover every day, and cleaned everything and polished everything, it wouldn't be the same. All that's left for me to say is that if you ever find yourself in a grand cathedral city, spare a thought for the village churches, Relics of a simpler time. They have more of a story to tell than you could ever imagine.